on a bunch of things and um, trying to teach it to house league sort of U9 kids all the way up to junior level players. So um, a lot of the clips you're going to see are from uh, the world championships, uh, not from the Olympics because I haven't had time to fit all those ones in. Um, but uh, I think it's an area that uh, our organization needs to be way better at. I think all female players need to be way better at and I think can start to be taught uh, all the way in U9 House League to build the foundation. So uh, I'll start rolling here. Um, so for us uh, at our organization, we have shared principles. I've talked about this at length here before. Uh, so our three Ps are poise, pace, and physicality. And that allows us to speak a similar language, similar vocabulary. We have a ton of teams. We're the biggest girls association in the world. So obviously I can't be the skills coach for every team, not enough hours in the day. Um, and we also can't, you know, expect paid skills coaches to come in and run Kim's uh, approved practices all the time. Obviously, we all have our own autonomy and free will. So, uh, but if we can work with the shared principles and say, okay, uh, skill coach X, we need to work on physicality and building a wall and creating a, an escape route and, and terms like that, any skills coach could could come in and address those needs. So it's uh, this might be a unique way of doing it that's specific to our organization uh, because we can't just farm out, you know, total female hockey or one skills area to do it because uh, we use 25 different rinks across the GTA to fulfill our practices. Uh, so you can imagine the kind of commute time and with the gas prices the way they are, it probably wouldn't work very well. Um, but basically we're not prescribing drills for the majority of our teams. However, uh, I am taking over sort of a more of a prescriptive uh idea or route with our U9 and our U11 programs. So having more of a shared curriculum and shared practice plans for next season. So that's kind of how we got here. So this is our, you know, our way to play. So all our teams play smart, fast, physical hockey, gain and maintain possession and adv create advantages all over the ice. So no matter what level we're at, we're trying to do that. Clearly our junior team is going to do that differently than our U9 rep team. Uh, but then we define it. So we, de we define physicality using strength and speed to overwhelm. Love that word. Uh, and then we look at it on offense and defense. So owning our space and on defense, contain pressure, obtain. Uh, for the purpose of this presentation, we're just talking about offense. So that idea of owning our space, which I think is a very powerful term to use uh, with our female players. So this is the Ivy Leaguer and me taking over. Um, but this is an example of a one page PDF we would share with all our coaches. And I may revise this for next year uh, to try and kind of uh, simplify a little bit, but our, our coaches seem to like it and our players seem to be able to speak this language. So obviously we're talking about offense, thinking of play ahead and initiating contact. That's the term I'm using incessantly uh, with our players and teams, initiate contact, initiate contact. When you have the puck, um, which is a very new concept to the majority of them, uh, I won't bore you with all the details of this. Obviously, if you want uh, a copy of it, you know where to find me, or you can just come and stare at this video later when uh, Wally posts it. Um, but think of play ahead, initiating contact, and all the skills that go into that, and how do we teach the basics. So uh, here we go from the worlds. I'm just showing a clip of like, this type of contact happens 100 times a game, maybe more. Turnbull and Hirokoski here, so owning that space, little bump. Not great defense by Finland there. But uh, again, this type of race, right? And how many millions of times do we see this in a game? And Turnbull could just go in and have a sword fight here with Yurkowski. But, you know, she gains that, spe that space, initiates contact through the stick, makes a pretty good play. So we'll keep rolling through the clips here. Um, so thinking of play ahead, we'll start with building a wall. So you can see here Ambrose moves it to Nurse. So Nurse in the corner here is the one you want to see. Just that idea of putting her butt into the other player's hands, other player's hands. that's what allows her, to, allows her to, make to, to make that play. So we'll show it again here, I think, so slow-mo. So Ambrose does, well. Ambrose does it as well. But just that idea of turning, that your idea body, of turning your body, like this is not an elite level skill. Like a house league player can understand that. She might not have the heel-to-heel -heel skills maybe to do it, but just understanding, put your butt in the other girl's hands, it always gets a good laugh. Um, they can do that, right? And can they do it against Team Russia in the World Championships? That might take a couple of years, but 
right? Just protects the play, pucks in her feet, right? And that's a position where a lot of girls are uncomfortable. You know, I tell them we're going to put the puck <laughs> in her feet and get pinned. And they're like, but I don't have it on my stick. Well, we got to get used to not having the puck on our stick all the time, guys. So anyways, really simple play. And these would be the clips that I would show our coaches to teach them. Uh, and, and they can then have access to all these clips. So it's a pretty good clip. You see both Jenner and Poulin do the exact same thing on the exact same shift. Uh, this is from the PWHPA. So through the hands, scoring chance, and then the other way on the same shift, Poulin, through fast hands, scoring chance. So again, Jenner here cuts off. Oh, I think it's Poulin, so that's a pretty good battle. Initiating contact, right? This is all legal, but we see girls here, they'll go in, you know, now this is a pretty good foot race. Yeah, you know, they're just hit sticks or you go, you go, I don't want it, right? And that's not a lot of contact, but it's enough to control the stick and get a scoring chance. And again, can our players do that at younger, lower levels? Absolutely. So here, this is a great clip of Johnson. So just pulling the puck wide, lean in, lean in, drive skate. Nice save by Makla. Um, so we'll show that again, wide. So Build the wall. So it goes puck, you bad guy. I'll show a picture of that in a minute. Arm bar, outside edges, inside edges, C cuts. Okay. Can all our players do that? Okay. First of all, we all want our players to be able to do that. And that is a, a missing skill in a lot of girls hockey, but that's where we want to get to. And then here's a clip of Dao against Finland against a six footer. So building the wall. She has an escape route now, so she can go either way. She reads the pressure from the Finnish player and is able to spin off an attack. So she reads the stick, great acceleration, decent shot opportunity. So here, quick read. Now this is putting all the skills that we're gonna start building the foundation together to get, or in one clip, but uh, so there's another Dartmouth alum and we're not all bad. Uh, so there's Stacy. I love this picture. So this is one now I, I just added into the presentation, but this shows you exactly what we're trying to do. Puck, you, bad guy. And this is something that is, this is one of the first things I show our players, right? We've got to be able to build that wall, right? To create separation. So again, is it going to be able to do, be done on the Olympic level right away? Absolutely not. But this is, this concept they can all get. Even my five-year-old gets that one. She tells me I'm the bad guy. So here's just basic leaning in. So here is just a basic practice plan that I've developed. So I did this with U9 House League all the way up to uh, our junior team and everyone in between. So quite often, I'll just take a practice plan and I look at it as a, a like the alphabet, right? So if the around the circle seat cuts is A and this drill in the bottom right corner where they do a little turn back based on coach pressure, that might be G or H, right? Like depending on what we're, we're teaching. So maybe those U9 House League kids don't get to this drill. You know, this seat cut around and shoot. Um, you know, the stick battles I, I don't have in here, but that's just a fun drill. Uh, so we're trying to get from A to Z, right? But everyone's got to start a drill one here on A. Like, you'd be astonished how many high-level players can't put the puck on the outside and do seat cuts. And then often we put a coach in the middle with their hands up, showing different numbers. And on the whistle, they change direction. They're not good at it. Now, are they high-level hockey players? Yes. Do they need work on the fundamentals? Absolutely. Okay, so the drills I'm going to show uh, don't directly go through this progression, but I just want to give you an idea. This is, I uh, did this and coached them. So if you want me to share it, I can. So this is all on Instagram. All my good stuff's on Instagram. Uh, so just like, now these are older players. These are U15 to U22, but they struggled with this uh, outside edge, right? So this player here is a junior player, so I'll pick on her. Outside edge here, right? Splitting the feet. Leaning in, so I tell them they got to have their pants on the wall. This is a great way to teach initiating contact because your opponent's not going to fall over. Um, the U9 kids have fun with this because they try to see how far they can lean and then fall over. Um, but it's a great starting point, and, and you build that foundation. And again, you know, she's on her forehand. This is easy. These two are on their backhand, and it's a little hard to see here. But you can see that you know they they have some some different challenges crossing their hands. This one you know, maybe getting their hands away. Like these are basic fundamentals. Now we don't spend a lot of time here uh, with this age group, but with the U9s, we do spend a lot of time here. So real simple drill. They're just changing direction on the whistle. Now, same thing with the puck. 
Okay, so again, with the, the little kids, I would have to show them how to dribble on their forehand and backhand side first before we get here. The older kids usually know how to do this. And then the final progression is we just have some instructors. Normally we'd have more instructors, but I was too busy videoing. Um, and they're just calling out numbers. So just scanning and awareness. Again, really basic, but it, this is a good way to set a foundation. Even if it's a higher level group, you know, just start here. Start here and reinforce the basics, right? And then every time you touch on initiate contact, build the wall, uh, scan the ice, right? You, you just drop that seed in at the beginning of the practice for them to, to build off of, which I think is important. So again, a lot of them here, especially the U9s, as soon as you start this scanning, everything breaks down. They're, they're not leaning into the wall. They can't stick handle anymore. Uh, they're not doing it, you know, they're not turning on the whistle. Like it just turns into a disaster. So this used to be where I started uh, back in the summer but there's no wall here. So these kids uh, struggle a little bit to get on their outside edge, but we would do this stationary, okay? And we could add more scanning. So these are U9 and U11, I think. Um, just trying to lean in, right? So they're trying to get, the key here is the straight leg with the straight stick. So some of them struggle with that. They wanna bend the leg that's close to the stick. Um, you know, these players are a little bit younger. These are a little bit older, but this is the first time they've done it. So it's a bit of a yard sale and that's fine. Um, but just getting to lean in to initiate contact. So we would do this moving as well, maybe just around the ice as a warm up. Again, you can use the instructors to hold up hands. So this might be a progression of the leaning in against the wall that we did before. It's just simple stuff, nothing revolutionary. Now this one's a, a hit with the crew. So obviously there's not two pucks on the ice. They love to remind me of that. Um, but now they're initiating contact against somebody else. So we don't see this exact type of contact a ton, right? Like that pure lateral contact, but this is a great way in a big group. You can easily have 30 kids doing this and the instructors can you know, go around, fix hands, fix body position. So we stick our stick right in between their um, pants there to make sure there's no space. So that's one of the key cues. Uh, these players are both midget players, so they can be cued to get on their outside edges more, right? And then they're trying to do puck you bad guy. So we want the puck out here outside the feet as much as possible. You can see a bunch of them are looking down. Again, these are all new drills to them. So, you know, there's a lot of room to work. And then they just spin around on the whistle and continue. It takes them a little long, longer than I would like. I like to move fast, but you get the idea here. Okay, so here's a progression. These are seven-year-olds. Pretty good. This one in green is pretty good. Um, so this is spin it to win it, which is just a fun drill. And we remind them to build the wall. So the only cue beyond, we start them in that initiating contact position. And then we ask them, we want you to maintain possession with as little skating as possible. So try to hold your ground, own your space. Don't skate away from the other girl. And like try to be rooted like a tree. So I'd say she does a pretty good job here, this green player, right? So she's building the wall. You know, the one in red's probably being a little nice. That's okay, right? But just pulling the puck away. Right, I'd like to see her push into the player a little bit more, but that requires a little more inside edge work. But that's that's pretty good. Here's some bigger ones doing the same thing. So again, they try to do dance moves and stay away from each other. We actually want them to push back into each other, right? So you'd like to see this player in white get on her inside edges and actually push her butt into the player in black, right? But again, that takes a little bit more confidence in the drill. And this is still a pretty good starting point. It works really well to have uh, like the half moon or the circle to keep them uh, corralled in place if you don't want to put too much stuff down on the ice. So this is, you know, the kids love the hitting pads, so we bring them out. And again, this is just a way to get them to initiate contact, lateral contact like this. You know, we don't see a ton in the female game, um, but it does help you know, to initiate contact with that shoulder on drive skating. So you can say, you know, I don't know if these players have ever done this before I filmed this. This might be their first crack at a drill like this. Okay, but you know, just trying to shift weight and lean in, not stand up. So hopefully it's slow down. So you see this player here, I think she's an A or double A player, but look what happens when she goes to initiate contact and how often do we see this, right? So she's gonna initiate contact basically on one foot, standing up straight. You know, if my instructor here wasn't as nice as she is, uh, we could send this player flying, but really simple drill. All the players are lined up here off screen. You know, we started this without the puck first. Um, and you, get, you have it going out of both ends. So really good drill um, to run out of practice because you can have it going. Goalies are going to get warmed up. You can obviously change what skill we want the shooter to do. 
as we go in. So that's kind of a leaning in progression. Now drive skating, right? Our ability to uh, do what Johnson did in that clip, um, or she, we don't we we progress to one hand off the stick, but you'll see uh, kind of how we work on that outside edge, leaning in here, kind of more of a circular pattern. So uh, these are the Housley kids. So just doing C cuts around Kim, the circle. Kim, uh, Dar Dave Barrett had his hand up. I am. Uh, oh. He Sorry, Dave. I have I can't see any hands right now, Wally. So if you can uh, manage I'll, that for me, that'd be great. We can just hold it here, and yeah, if anyone has questions, okay. yeah, feel so, free so, to shoot. So Kim, I didn't know if you wanted to go through the whole thing, or you didn't mind being interrupted. So I just threw a hand up there. I love talking, Dave. So okay. Do whatever. I'm <laughs> so good. So you didn't answer my question then. You can interrupt me. I have <laughs> I have right. a seven, five, and four year old. I'm used to it. So a couple of things. One, do you ever do any of this off ice? Because there's a lot of these things that look like you could do leaning on the walls, uh, a lot of balance drills. I know you're not on skates. Do you ever do any of it off ice with these drills? Yep. Yeah, I totally do. And um, I would like to do more. You know, obviously uh, in Toronto here, we've not had our uh, all yeah. our ducks in a row. But absolutely, you could see yeah, a group like this would be a perfect example, right? You just line them up in the hallway with their skates on when they're dressed and just start with that. Um, you know, just holding their stick like that. And then you've, you've kind of eliminated that first drill um, or at least uh, less than the amount of ice time you're wasting. Uh, yeah. I would say Toronto ice time is like a, a, a large Starbucks a minute, right? So you yeah. uh, know how volu uh, uh, valuable it is. But yeah, we can definitely do a lot of this off the ice. Um, you know, inevitably our coaches are going to teach it more on the ice. Um, and I think it has an impact too when the parents see it. The parents love this. Oh my God, do they love this? They just feel like their daughters are just getting some secret code that they never had before. So there is a value from an instructor standpoint to showing this on the ice because uh, yeah. it definitely does have a, a bit of a wow factor because their daughters are never taught this. But, uh, but like and and like using your body to protect the puck or the ball is a common concept in soccer or basketball or hockey. And like my father was a soccer player, so he taught me this kind of stuff, and I appreciate. Uh, in in the women's game, it might be a little bit unique, but um, I wondered also if you ever looked at at soccer drills or basketball drills as opportunities to learn how to build that wall, as you talk about, and use your body as a weapon offensively to protect the ball or the puck or whatever you're using. Well, yeah, I mean, I I didn't even play hockey till I was 13. I was a soccer and basketball player, so I think I had an innate ability to do this. Um, yeah. But yeah, those are those are different ways that. You know what this this year we were hoping to instill the curriculum on a large scale and and of course that got curtailed a little bit um but i think that especially for our entire u9 and u11 age group from uh double a all the way down to house league is going to have a similar curriculum so to your point i can't deliver that on the ice with every single team that would be almost 35 teams at between those two levels um so we would you know, we have to find more creative ways of doing it. So absolutely. And I also think, um, you know, some of our coaches at these levels who maybe aren't as experienced on the ice and might not be as comfortable on their outside edges might feel a lot more comfortable teaching it leaning against a wall or with a soccer ball or a basketball as well. So no, that's a great point. And, um, you know, definitely ways to see uh, transference. Although it's interesting. Sometimes I ask the girls, could you play soccer or basketball? And it's a bit disturbing how few hands go up sometimes, although I think they're also scared of me. So there's that. And they don't want to answer my question. So that's fine too. Any other hands up, Wally? Sorry, I can't see it, but uh, I'm afraid if I push a button, everything will burn down here. Keep her going. Keep her going. All right, more talking. So uh, like I said, this is drive skating. We would start without the puck. Uh, and this is the first time these kids have done it, like literally their first rep. So this one who's coming around the corner here is not bad. The rest of them are struggling a bit, but you got to embrace the suck, as I like to say. Um, so here's, again, a junior player doing it with the puck. We'd start without the puck. So just some drive skating. You can see she's pretty good on that outside edge. Uh, and here's a progression. Sorry, the video is not great on this one. But she's we're teaching here shin pad to stick. So let me go back here. And uh, I didn't double up on these drills. So here, right, we're the puck is the bad guy here, right? So she's trying to build that wall. So she's as she goes through, she's pulling the puck as far away as possible uh, and rebuilding that wall. So this player, as my orange jersey people are the ones who've done a lot of stuff with me, um, she's pretty good at this. So pulls the puck through, and then she's trying to create puck. You, bad guy here. 
a real simple drill. You could do this with three players and the two players can be the pylons. So that's kind of what we did here with the coach. So here we tell the players to go shin pad to stick, right? So we talk about controlling other people's sticks. You can do that when your butt is on their hands and also when you get shin pad to stick. Um, and obviously she could drop her, well, maybe not on her forehand side, but on her backhand side, drop, drop her uh, hand to push away the stick, but just some planting of the seed of this idea with the players. So this again is, you know, if you have 30 players on the ice, this is pretty easy to do. Although the Zamboni guys don't love it so much after. That's why we pay them the big bucks. Um, so again, now we would go just drive skating around the circle. So here's the house league kids just leaning in, right? Like that's dead simple. But again, how often have, have our players done that? And, and we don't need the hitting pads here. Again, the coach is kind of like having them too, you know, give your players a little, little love. Okay, but yeah, she could be better outside edge. She could pull that puck. But for a house league kid, that's not bad on the backhand. It's a good, you know, you got to start somewhere. The shot needs some work, but that's something else. Okay, so now we got a double A kid. So there's that drive skate, right? She's just leaning in against the coach. This player's got great edges. So there's a younger kid. So same thing, drive skating, right? So she doesn't want to initiate contact that one. She just wants to run away. This is typical in, in our game. Right, so we see the first one. The player has to lean into the coach, but they don't want to. They want to kind of stay on the outside. So we tell them, you hit the coach. The coach doesn't hit you as much as my coaches might want to hit them, just for fun. But again, they want to accept the outside and skate into the corner. So this takes a while for them to get used to. Um, but you know, that's the same drill as the house league kids did. So again, these are all U11 kids, I believe. Maybe some U13s you can add a little dangle or something before they shoot. So you can see you set this up in four corners. You can put two more stations in the middle of the ice. This one likes to initiate contact. And uh, there's always a few in each group who love it. Uh, but again, you know, these kids will all be playing A, double A, younger. This one's doing a good job of turning her shoulder. I think that's the second or third time she's done it. She's done a couple camps. But just give you an idea, like, again, these kids are all pretty good skaters, pretty decent hockey players, but even then, you know, this is a concept that they're not super comfortable with. So here's the higher level kid again, initiate contact. So now there's just a little turn back. So we can do that where it's scripted. So this would be the scripted version where we tell her she's got to turn back. Um, right. And, uh, you know, there's a, a main attacking area right here. So the defenseman takes the inside. She rolls back to the outside. Can also do it where it's unscripted. So my coach here would push more on one side than the other. So if she pushed her on the hash mark side, obviously that would accelerate the player here. If she pushed her on the, the high side, that would cue the player to roll off. So again, out of this group of four, uh, maybe this player here could, could read the push a little bit already and be able to understand how to spin off of it. The other three may not be there yet. So it might be something that we'd introduce or we just meet them where they are, right? If this is E in the curriculum, you know, this kid might be able to go to M but this kid might need E. So you got to gotta switch it up as we go through. Um, push them where we can. And my instructors kind of understand how to do that. I think this might be the same clip. So just drive skate. That's a pretty good wall, right? And then make the read. And we can add all sorts of things after it to uh, increase the skill. So let's see. What, oh, this might have a heel to heel. Yeah, so just another protect move. So just adding some different skating skills to it. Right. And we would have already taught that heel to heel. So now she's making a read. Right. So this coach is trying to keep up he just keeps pushing her. And then she turns away from contact. Not that she has to turn away from contact. She can obviously drive through it if she wants. So that's kind of the drive skating piece. Uh, Wally, I don't know if anyone has a hand up or if we can. This is sort of my last, uh, I guess, nugget here. Uh, I have a question. Uh, Go for it, Wally. Watch, watching this, you're teaching, you've broken it down brilliantly. There's progressions in there I've never thought of, all unique. Uh, I'm thinking the average coach uh, might not be able to teach those points, but the kids would have to practice them uh, in small area games. One-on-one, -on -one, two two-on-two, small area. You're just repeating that. and. Um, my my concern is these the degree of details that you and I'm sure most of the people on here have for the teaching aspect 
today's coaches, um, they, it's pretty complex for them. And I'm wondering, when you're not there, do they rely on small area games more or deliberate teaching? That's a great point. So when I'm not, so they're always on the ice with me. So there's, you know, uh, some, some teams I'm on with every week and some, you know, they say, hey, can you come do the physicality thing? And I come do the physicality thing. So I always encourage as many coaches learning with their players on the ice at the same time. It's not a night off to go and get a coffee. Uh, so that's the first point. Second point is it, it, that shared vocabulary is really critical. So as I'm teaching, we're talking about building the wall. Uh, we're talking about butt in the hands. We're talking about puck you, bad guy. And th these players remember, you know, especially the butt in the hands. They remember all this stuff. Um, so even if the edge work isn't perfect or it, like that's the seed we really want to plant is the words because then the coach can come back and say, okay, we're going to work on initiating contact. But what did coach Kim say about building the wall? Now this is girls hockey. Like when you ask five hands go up and you might not get the answer you want, but they are usually pretty engaged in this stuff. Um, and they want to show that they've, uh, they've learned. So we, we teach the vocabulary as well as the drills to support it. And then I leave them with the drill plan. So all our coaches are on uh, on the same coach them platform. So they have access to all the drills. I have videos of all the drills on there. And then anytime I run a practice plan with a team, I, I send it to them. Like it's not really rocket science. So I send it to them. So then I say, okay, you have to repeat this exact practice two more times, right? So if it's a Monday, do it the next two Mondays. You know, the first time we do it, they're just learning. Second time. Some of them might be able to really nail it down. Some are still learning. By the third time, most of them, they know the drills. They know the key concepts, the key vocabulary, and they're now being able to utilize it, manipulate it, uh, use it as a tool to their advantage. So that would be how I help the coaches to cement some of these fundamental skills, right? We talked before, coaches want to just rush through it and be like, oh, we did it once. You know, we always think we touched on it once. So, of course, all the players remember. Right. And, and, and clearly they don't. So, um, you know, that would be a, a fundamental sort of practice plan. This is, you know, this is probably two or three practice plans once we get through all of it. Um, but that's how I would do it. And then I would have the video and the resources to support it. Um, but that's again, the, that that vocabulary and, and you'll see some drills here. So there's going to be more compete drills in small area games that are going to force them to initiate contact um, and build the wall. And then the coaches can keep throwing out those terms. Um, and then I encourage them, like whether it's the, the Team Canada cl clips I showed earlier or even video from their own games, right? Can you watch video from your own team and pick out uh, examples of initiating contact or getting your butt in the hands or, right? So it's a lot more powerful when the girls uh, see it doing them or see it uh, themselves doing it. So I hope that helps, but I'll show a couple compete drills here um, that uh, are fun. And uh, yeah, I just want yeah. to mention on the girl, the guy side, observing practices uh, and just being in the minor hockey uh, li uh, listening group, coaches usually say, well, we've worked on that. And they, it's that one time we've worked on it, but they really haven't accomplished the purpose of whatever the working on it was. So that, I think what you're doing is brilliant if they can experiment with it and get, and the idea of your three keywords and then physicality and what that means and the subwords that go into that, you get the picture from those subwords. And the mechanic, biomechanics seems, will fall in place quite naturally. So that's good, continue, go ahead. Thanks, Wally. And just to uh, just to piggyback on that, like all the the teachings of it and like the videos I've done, like the whole curriculum of how why we do this, like there's we have a whole website I created that that feeds the coaches this information, right? So they can always refer back to it. Um, it's not just a, a one and done sort of thing. But yeah, they have to hammer it home, and it, it's like the John Wooden quote, right? You haven't taught until they've learned. How do you know if they've learned? Well. I mean, you can ask them, and again, the girls will put up their hand, but it, until you can watch a video of a game or be standing on the bench and see them doing this, then they haven't really learned it, right? They're not using it as an offensive weapon. So that gives you your, your greatest uh, feedback tool. Do I see our kids doing it? Do I, are they missing opportunities to do it? Um, and again, it might take 
three or four months. If it's, if it's a brand new skill like this uh, to many of them, it might take a while. But the hope is three to five years from now, every single player we have who's as old as these two in this picture will have learned it since they're eight and are, are great at it. And then, you know, I probably don't have a job anymore, but that's fine. All right, so uh, start more drills like this in a pinned position. I alluded to this earlier when I saw the Sarah Nurse clip, right? The puck's here in Katie's feet, and that's okay. Um, you know, I'd like to see Katie's hand up the wall a little bit more. She's a pretty tall kid. Um, but just this idea of, of being comfortable with the puck, not on your blade, and um, being able to build that wall, right? So, you know, if this player starts to fish around it in the, with her stick, you've already won. You just spin and go. Anyways, start more like this. I made them stand here for a long time. They didn't really love that. So here's the little kids, right? So just pinning this, you know, this is a variation. So then they pinned on one side and they had to spin off of it and sprint to the blue. So uh, these two, so here's the pin. She goes more on one side, pin, and then we add the puck. So again, like this, these are our youngest players and start without the puck. This is a great drill, right? Get to the middle, get inside the dot line, right? Where all the all the good stuff happens. So here, right? Could she go heel to heel there and spin? Sure. There's a bunch of other skills she could use. So here's the old ladies doing it. So pushing off, right? And then I think she skates through the stick here. So they're just combining two initiating contact skills. And then she would pick up a puck from the other side and go in and shoot. Would be another way to do this. So get lots of reps. Same thing with the puck. So you could start tons of drills like this, right? Just do a single push. But again, shin pad the stick in a more linear fashion, right? So here's, uh, to your point, Wally, some more basic drills um, to get them initiating contact. So this one I call the two go. Uh, it's not in the practice plan I showed. So um, the white player here is being pinned by the black player. So my, my coach over here is, uh, it's cueing them. So there's two goes on the first go. The white player pushes her off her back, kind of like the drills you just saw. And then she does like what I call dance moves. Uh, and the reason we have her do that is just to get her comfortable uh, handling the puck along the wall with someone on her back. So ideally, if she could push her off and just get to the net, we would love that. Um, but the dance moves uh, gives this player in black another opportunity to initiate contact and for white to make another read to, read, uh, to spin off of it. So you see here, these are both U13 minor players, first year players. So she's doing the dance moves, then you hear the second go, and the player in white here does a great job, right? Spins off, and we see it again. So let's watch slow motion. So there's the initial push off. So this would be the first go, okay? And you know, there's a bunch of stuff to work on here, but she's just working in that space beneath the net. There's the second go. So the player in black does a good job of pinning. So she could spin right there, get to the net, but I guess she sees the stick, doesn't want to go that way. So here's the right way to go. Okay, just a really simple drill. They love it. Uh, and again, you know, you could have a goalie here. You could set it up a million different ways, but this is a really simple one that um, they seem to really enjoy. So same idea, just a slightly different spot. So here's the first go. There's the second go. The one in all black likes to hit people, which is fine. Okay, so again, spinning off pressure, building that wall. Spinning off again, right? So, you know, that uses all the skills. Here's the same two again. So build the wall. We're not working really on the defensive side of it, but we could obviously include that as well. So again, just, you know, initiate. I'd like to see her initiate a little earlier there, but that's okay. So again, just competitive. And then there's, this is our two-on-two -two game. So they go in one-on-one. -on -one. We could easily have the goalies here. Uh, they go in one-on-one. -on -one. And whichever player touches it first, uh, her team's on offense. And then she can add in a second player. So for the younger, uh, less experienced players, we send two in, two in right away or one in right away like this. And then the second two engage right away. But these players, again, are, you know, double A players. Uh, so we're making them think a little bit more. So when I think the player in black touches the puck first, uh, I think her partner's sleeping a little bit back here in line, but she can initiate. Uh, adding another player so she'll wake up eventually there you go so they have to score by doing a wraparound so they can't just shoot it from out there so then red gains control and the other red jumps in so this one's a fan favorite um 
you know, like to see a little more contact. You can imagine we do this with the junior players in the same amount of space, right? So now they're, you know, the bodies are a lot bigger. I don't ever go above two on two. I like it just as a, as a two on two drill. Cause then no one's uh, just a casual observer. So I'll just backtrack again and then I'll stop talking um, and turn this stuff off. So again, they're going to have to initiate contact there. Uh, so you get a little bit of that skill and then add them in and then fight for that possession. And then we go two on two live. So this gets pretty competitive, uh, especially if you add the goalies in. And then they just, they have to score on the wrap round. That one's pretty simple. And then you guys already know where to find me. So I guess we don't need that part. Um, that's all my blabbing. Sorry guys, I talked for a long time. Sorry, Wally, I don't think you were expecting all of that, but you got it anyways. You're welcome. I'm going to stop sharing. There you go, Wally. I'm done. Thanks very much, uh, Kim. I guess I got a question. Um, I, I've worked with a few coaches over many years, and uh, Jordan, um, you work with the Midget Double A team. Uh, how much of this would you be able to apply moving forward with your teams at selective times? That saying of right stuff, right amount, right time. You're coaching a team competing in a league at a different level, and these little tactical skills are critical. So I'm just curious for all people that are still actively coaching, but Jordan in particular, knowing your double A girls, what? Uh, how would you apply some of those things in your practice? Jordan, are you there? Okay, I'm going to ask Carla if um, is this something you would do on a skills only day or um, is this something you do, uh, some of these kinds of things? Or you may be a person who would let them compete in small area games more and reinforce teaching points. Carla? Yeah, thanks, Wally. Thanks, Kim. Uh, that was, it was really good. Um, no, I think, Wally, there's a time and place for all of it. And at the end of the day, when doing the small area games and the combative stuff, as Kim was showing, like, you know, I just see a real natural feel. Um, it allows you to just to teach both sides of the games and so many more of your opportunities that you do. So I think of a natural angling drill well, this engagement piece that she's teaching us and showing us here today, you know, that's what the offensive puck carrier can be working on. So now you can work both sides of your drill uh, consistently. So, so no, I, I really appreciate sort of the the process that you take, Kim, and the detail at which you're you're teaching and the progressions that you have too that Wally alluded to. Um, so I think this all this stuff applies at every level. Like again, she's showing the national team clips and and they're working on that stuff too. So you know, I I think. Uh, Kim Kim stated often, like to the level of our players, what do we need and how do we need it? So, you know, I start drills a lot that way too, Kim. Um, I've done it a little bit more from the defensive side at times. So I was like, okay, well, I'll, I'll engage the offensive side now. So, you know, that got me thinking. So I think there's, there's endless value as long as you've got a plan and a purpose. Um, I, I think athletes grow and, and that's what exactly I saw in that presentation was, was a purposeful presentation um, that depending on where our groups are, we can kind of pick a starting point and, and help them grow. So, you know, I, I'm, I always naturally lean a little bit more to the, I, I would actually grow just like Kim showed. I would naturally do sort of a, a strategic skill-based drill at some point in the practice leading up to a small area game where we'd emphasize the same, the same tactic. So I, I, I just, I think there's, I thought it was great, really enjoyed it. And I would absolutely steal some of it and I will. So thanks for that, Kim. Yeah, I'm curious about Al Ramsey because he's working at younger age levels. Al, are you still with us? No response. Okay. Uh, Dave, it's been a while since you've been on the ice, but the challenge of applying the details of this uh, to, to minor hockey players, but guys in particular, I think – the girls feed off detail. They get the purpose of what you're doing. And I'm just wondering whether guys, and that's where if Al is on, I'd sure love to hear him speak to it. 
to what degree would this become boring for guys or would they eat the deliberate practice up and benefit from it? Al, I see you're, uh, you're available. Yeah, sorry, Wally, just took my, took my mute a few minutes there to catch up. But no, I thought the presentation was amazing. Uh, I thought she did a really good job of breaking the skills down. I uh, really loved the teaching points. Um, and, and obviously the small area game. So I, I don't, I mean, from my side, this is something that's not female specific, right? I mean, this is, this is extremely useful on the male side as well. And it's, you know, we're, we're doing a lot of this, a lot of similar stuff with the kids. I mean, you know, body contact has to be start, has to be started from six U, eight U, right? For the guys, because by the time they get to 14 U, if they try to do a three day checking clinic, which is what, you know, they try to push on the kids here, it's too late, right? Like they've got to be, they've got to be learning this stuff starting from the starting from a really young age like Kim said about you know teaching the house league kids we do the same thing with with ours here so I think it's I think it's really great stuff I'm going to steal a little bit of it too Kim and uh really appreciate the presentation today Kim I just want to mention uh before you were born I was a part of the Hockey Canada group developing a checking progression and one of the first progressions was called contact confidence and uh, players went on each side of the blue line uh, but elbows joined were leaning on each other they had three strides contact three strides contact elbows joined and then they would go with no elbow contact they would one would be the contactor one could be the receiver but that's what we were doing back in the day but this was just contact confidence. They feel comfortable with it. And I noticed in some of the girls were a little shyer than others. And I think young boys, it's the same thing. There are some that are overly aggressive. And Al, I'm sure you've done the gauntlet drill in the past, which I think you might be going to court for if you did it again. But uh, I find it's a great drill done in uh, uh, with young boys where there's separation and the players are staggered as a, a player skates through the gauntlet, initiating contact with the stationary people and then coming down the boards and trying to get through everybody really cracking you. But the practical value of that is just psychologically coping with contact and overcoming fear. And I think the game is changing on the guy's side where stick on puck, body position, and awareness of what's available and doing things to create more availability of options. It's The game is just changing enormously. So, uh, Kim, the Hockey Canada skills presentation I shared uh, Daryl's talk with Hockey Alberta, an excellent one, but the one following it by Riley is another example, I think, of you, the, you young people are taking things to another level. So kudos to you. Now, well, I don't... Wally, do you mind if I just, I, I just want to thank you that, for that, by the way. You guys are very kind, and uh, as you can tell, I'm got to use my Ivy League skills somewhere, so this is getting a little nerdy uh, on my end, but... Um, I agree with you completely. It is confidence. And I think in, in girls hockey, like if I could just inject everyone with confidence and give them no more skill, the level of female hockey would go up exponentially, right? Like so much of it is them just having more confidence and feeling like they have a tool. The nice thing about this is they feel like they have a tool that other people don't have, right? It's like a little bit of a secret sauce now that everyone's going to steal my stuff. Like, I don't care. It's all on my Instagram. You can have it all. Um, but, you know, when they go in and do it, it's funny because I, I see the girls do it in a game and they, they put their butt in their hands. They push off someone on the the wall and the other player like flies across the ice. Like we, cause she's not expecting to be pushed when the other girl has the puck. And like, like that alone is worth its weight in gold, right? Just watch that other player fly off and you get a free pass to the net. Um, you know, that's all they need. They just need that one instance of initiating contact and, and gaining space. And, and that's all it takes uh, to get them to use it. And to your point, you know, the ones who are slightly more aggressive or overly aggressive, and we have those in the female game too, right? Teaching them how to do it strategically to be able to spin off, right? If you're that aggressive and you can create a huge escape route for yourself, 
I mean, now you're just offensively, you're driving the bus, right? The little ones may not be able to get themselves as big of an escape route. So, um, you know, you, you hear it from both sides, the ones who are less confident and the ones who uh, maybe don't know how to use their superpowers in the right way um, and being able to, to give them a little bit more direction. Because again, you, you can teach them how to initiate contact, how to, you know, build the wall, how to build an escape route. But then what do you do? Like you have to do something with it. You have to make a decision um, as a result of that, right? So this is a little more of the fundamental skill, but then we're, we're constantly infusing, okay, what side does that girl stick on? When she pins you, then you look over your shoulder. If her stick's over there, don't go that way. Like that, again, it's pretty low-hanging fruit, um, but that's how we start to teach hockey IQ uh, and layer it in uh, with the skill. You're on mute, Wally. Dave Barrett and Al Ramsey. So, Dave, would you go first? Hey, thanks. Uh, Kim, that was awesome. Love the progressions. I actually don't usually think of it from the offensive side. I think of it from the defensive side. Um, so, three quick points. One, and I think Mike Weaver can attest to this, that the way you play defensively in those situations has evolved tremendously over time. We used to use can openers and a lot of clutch and grab, and that's kind of gone away now. And you got to move your feet and be a little bit more smart about how you're utilizing your stick. Whereas I think the offensive kind of concepts that you brought forward are, are more timeless. And I think what were used many years ago, and maybe you're thinking about it, it's progressed, but kind of skills have maintained the same. Two, when I used this with our university girls, we, you know, we were introducing a lot more physicality into our, uh, into our game. They used to start giggling when we did drills because they weren't used to the contact that we were introducing to them. And then they got more and more comfortable with it over time. Their kind of level of grit in their game and sandpaper in their game was exponentially growing because they really had never been exposed to the type of thinking that you're doing. And three, to Wally's kind of identity and purpose kind of um, conversations that you have more at a, a mission statement level, I think this feeds perfectly into it if your team is uh, desiring to be, um, you know, a more competitive, physical type of team. You start to build these drills into it and reinforce that culture that your group is aspiring to be like. And I know at, at, on our team, that's certainly something that we did every day in practice to reinforce the identity of our team, not only during games, but during practices, and it just built into it. And I think on the offensive side, Kim, what you're showing from a physicality perspective, I think is outstanding. So it's great. Thank you so much for that. Al? Yeah, I was going to say, Wally, one of the, so one of the nuances that I really, really loved about the presentation was the different, the different looks in the small area games and the one-on-ones from different positions, different starting positions in the drill. Like starting from the pin and starting from a 50-50 race fairly close to the boards, coming down the wall, coming out of the corner. Like I, I just love the way that um, you know you could manipulate the types of contact and the types of you know how they're going to deal with that contact just by changing sort of the scenario right for essentially the same drill like a one on one. So I thought that was really good, Kim. Well, that's like you know I, as it evolves, right? Like every puck retrieval, like a lot of puck retrievals have this, right? Like I, I think about. Uh, Cribber and like, you know, you're teaching the D how to do a regroup, but inevitably they have to retrieve the puck first and, and make a read and, 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 you know, scan the ice. And, and is there somebody chasing them? Do they have to win the lane before they even get there? You know, all these, it applies in, in so many different areas. Um, and, you know, the contact against the wall, it seems to be the area that um, has the most immediate, uh, positive feedback from the coaches and, and the parents because they feel like their players are safer, um, you know, whether they have or don't have the puck. And, and I do teach it from the defensive side, but, you know, I, I've kind of, um, at least in my business, uh, I try to teach things that, A, maybe a lot of other people aren't teaching, and B, uh, kind of things that separate you from everybody else. So, like, if not a lot of other girls are doing this and you're great at it, it's going to make you stand out. Uh, so that's kind of the, the way I... Uh, approached it uh, from the total female hockey side of things, maybe less so from, from uh, when I'm wearing my Lee side hat. Um, but the, 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 the parents just, I mean, they just are like over the moon about this and the coaches as well. And it, it comes down to safety and, um, you know, concussions in, in the female game. It's still a huge problem, right? So even if it's just contact confidence, 
uh, when you have the puck, it's going to transfer over if you're comfortable leaning in and getting on that outside edge and not being up so tall. Uh, so, you know, I, that's not necessarily the sell um, when I'm speaking to the players. Like, you're going to get hurt less, but um, we are seeing that they are, <coughs> that is happening. Uh, and there's less, you know, sword fight and chicken fight going in for a puck along the wall because they understand how to win the lane and initiate contact safely. Uh, so that's, you know, a, a very important a bonus of all of this over and be up, uh, above driving offense. Mike, Mike Weaver. Hey guys. Well, yeah, sorry. I haven't been on in the last couple of weeks. I've been very, very busy. Um, but I'm, I'm glad I actually was on, on this one. Um, Kim, that was, uh, what, with what I saw, I only saw the second part of it, but, um, it was, uh, very, uh, it was, it was, it was awesome. I really liked those, uh, the, that, that game at the end too was pretty cool. Um, for the wraparounds too. Um, one of the things I would say with hitting, I think that they ended up going, I don't know if you guys have ta uh, touched on it. They ended up going too old for these kids. Um, they got, uh, they, they moved it up to um, uh, Bantam, which I think that they are too big and too strong, um, too many different heights. Um, and if it was uh, still at the major uh, peewee, that's kind of uh, a little, you're a little bit more Gumby um, uh, around that age compared to getting into the the, the Bantam ages. Um, so th that would be that would be kind of my thing. Um, and then and then um, when Kim was talking about um, you know obviously understanding uh, coming into the hit of where the stick is um, because you always a lot of kids are just going for the hit rather than coming in with a plan and if you're able to come in with a plan and and your objective is not to murder the person your objective is to separate the man from the body and understand that you know having respect for the game and the respect for your your opponents is is huge in the in, in this game and and you know sure it's great to have a big hit and everything but the outcome um should be um to get that puck 